next life. Others say maybe it was later on when his son, his rebellious son by the name of Absalom, where he rebelled against David and trampled upon his heart many times and it hurt and brought much pain and sorrow unto David. Maybe it was this dark time within his life, but I can, you can be assured of this. When David penned down these words, it was in a troublesome time within his life. But you know what? As he knew within the past, he had a personal and intimate relationship with God and he knew who to turn to in times of trouble. When trouble come, he turned unto the Lord, didn't he? So glad. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it. We find safety in various ways. People put up safety nets and try to find safety in various things in which we trust in. And even today out here with all these certain things that we have, but the main safety that you can find is get in the presence of God for there is safety in the arms of the Lord. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it. When trouble comes, you know what? We don't run from God. We run to God and say, Oh God, it's me, oh Lord. I need you, Lord. One more time. Woo! <laughs> Sometimes we're praying for so many others. Sometimes you've got to say, Lord, it's me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. It's me again, Lord. <laughs> and I'm so glad we've got a God, aren't you, that he is not deaf. <laughs> he is not mute. He is alive and well. We serve a God of the living, not the God of the dead. We serve a God that still is and not the God that once was. We serve a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He is steadfast. Amen. He is always abounding. We serve as a young people say, and by the way, it's not many of these sayings that are said, some of them right out of the Bible. Do you know that? Another place in Scripture in the Psalms says that not only he says he is bad. Young folks say that today when they talk about someone else, say he is bad. Not just meaning they have a bad character and so forth. They're meaning they're awesome. Look at how they are. Amen. God is awesome, isn't he? God is a bad God. I don't mean he's not, he's a good God, but when I say bad in the sense of the word, that he is awesome, he is powerful, he is all-knowing, he is all-present, amen? And isn't it wonderful how God, the long arm of the Lord, his arm is never too short and his ear is never too heavy? I'm so glad I've been on the phone before with people and sometimes my ear gets sore where they talk, we've talked so long. Used to be them older phones were like that. You remember them? <laughs> Hadn't been that many years ago. Come on. You had to dial it then. Yeah, mother had one on the wall. She tried to put it up a little higher so us children couldn't get on it. But, you know, we grew. <laughs> Party lines. We reached up on there and the neighbors down the road from us and above us and we, we slipped that receiver off real careful. We shouldn't have done that. You know, then they say, I think I hear somebody on that. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you got a bad gossiper, uh, I don't know how them old switchboards worked back then. You remember on Little House in the Prairie, Harriet Olson, she should have never been the switchboard operator. <laughs> she was listening in on every conversation. Every now and then we listen in, try to hear, and somebody'd say, I think I hear somebody on the other, they're open on the phone there. Then we'd have to slide it over real easy and click. <laughs> My mother had a cord on that thing. We lived in a small little farmhouse, but she had one of those real long cords. I mean, ever so that cord was a mess after so long. She would stretch that thing as far as she could from one end of the house to the other. And then it'd all get all wound up. But if you was on that phone very long, it seemed like your ear would get sore because your ear was getting heavy. You get tired. You ever sit there with somebody and you're listening and you listen and sometimes you're listening to somebody. <laughs> it should be a two-way. Amen. <laughs> but you can't get a word in edgewise with some people because they just all. 
and you hear it gets sold. But you know, that's not the way God, listen. Now I'm telling you and describing this is the God that which we serve. Now it is more than one person comes to me and starts talking to me. I'm like this, what? <laughs> There's over six billion people upon the face of this planet. Now think about it. Now not all of us are saved and Christians and calling out upon the Lord and have a personal relationship with the Lord. But you know what? Even if one million of them were saved and born again, bought by the blood of Jesus, just like we're in this service here tonight, how many other services are going on throughout this world? And many of them are calling out upon the Lord. But you know what? His ear never gets heavy. And he can understand everyone who has prayed. And God can hear and answer your prayers. Woo! Isn't it something how God, now that's a big God that which we serve. God can just, he don't have, he flex his muscles a little bit there. When God says a prayer, he can say three words, Lazarus come forth. Right. Now David here, the Bible says he's in a troublesome situation. It seems like he's down and out and all darkness has come in. Look like again, it's hopeless and helpless situation within his life. But he's turned unto the Lord. He's cried out unto God. Sometimes you've got to cry out unto the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad again I did not call. So many others, they call out upon the false gods. They do not hear. They cannot see. They cannot feel. They call out upon Buddha. They call out upon little statues made of wood and concrete and so forth. But I'm so glad I call out upon the Lord. And you know what? He can hear and answer prayer. Amen. I've got a God that works. Amen. He works for me. He works for you. Woo! I see little Buddha with his statue. He's, he's not, well, maybe let me rephrase. He's not so little. Some of us, you know, even me, God give me abundant life. <laughs> but Buddha's always sitting with his hands in his little pouch. He doesn't do anything for his people. But you got a God that works on your behalf. A God that wants to hear and answer. A God that never gets tarred. You can't get out of the long arm of the Lord. You're never too out of His reach. You're never too far that you're out of His reach. His ear never gets too heavy. God Almighty Himself, He hears and, and He hears and answers your prayer. God never gets tired. He is always on call 24-7. Amen. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You know, sometimes even in middle, in midnight or 2 o'clock or whatever watch of the day that it is, an hour of the day, he is right there and he wants to hear from you. It doesn't matter how big that it is or how small that it is. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Amen. Amen. He need to get God. And David says in this time within his life, he said, I need the Lord. And who's he waiting on? Now sometimes you know what? I said God hears and answers prayer. But you know it's yes, it's no, or it's wait. <laughs> and David says, I waited patiently upon the Lord. I didn't wait, he said, upon my wife. <laughs> I was not waiting upon Bathsheba to get me up out of this fix that I've got myself in. Amen. I did not wait, he said. I did not wait upon 